ready to do this thing? Let's do it. All right, guys. Hey, I am DC, your host, your host of Barside Jive Live, and I am on Dragon Street. That's right, guys. Back on Dragon Street because it's Wednesday, and this is the thing we do on Wednesdays at 7 p.m. Gosh, can you believe it's January 8th already? It's already. It's already the 8th. A brand new decade. It's already January 8th, and we're at one of the coolest places that I think there are on Dragon Street because they got a lot of cool artists here showing off their stuff, guys. But the 8th is, a, is like, it's huge because um, a lot of stuff happened on the 8th, but a lot of stuff happened on the 7th, too. But anyway, it, um, my brother would have been 56 years old if he was still alive. Well, he's still alive. He's just not here on earth. But uh, he would have, uh, he passed away. And, and on this day in 95. So, hey, Keith. I know he's watching over me. But uh, January 8th. And this show, ca this show, oh, I can't talk. This show broadcasts live here from uh, 1523 Dragon Street in the heart of the Dallas Design District. Just down the street from the new Virgin Hotel. Did you guys see it? I did. Pretty cool, huh? Wish they had slot machines. Oh, yeah, right. Yeah, doesn't everybody else. This is the location of the very cool hip and hippie pop-ups, and I'm surrounded by artisans of all types. Normally, Brad Jensen and I would talk about that later during the show, but unfortunately, Brad uh, is with a friend and I who just got diagnosed with stage 4 cancer. And uh, so he's with him tonight and Brad won't be here, but uh, I hate to be so negative, but this is re our reality that we live in, so I'm not going to hesitate to talk about it. So we'll, uh, we'll send some thoughts and prayers out to Brad's friend, but uh, I do respect the fact that he went to go visit him today instead of coming here. We'll get Brad in here on another day. But uh, my show today is brought to you by Hip and Hippie. Hip and Hippie is a planet-loving company known for its high-quality, earth-friendly, 100% recyclable candle line, and don't forget those natural body care products. It's no wonder eco-supporting people love Hip and Hippie, hipandhippie.com. On this show, I feature musicians and visual artists every week, so let's get started. I am sitting next to the legendary... Tin Man Travis, singer, songwriter, extraordinaire. And visual, visual artist. And visual and artist. artist. And visual artist. Indeed. <laughs> so welcome, Tin, to the show. Well, it's good to be it's here. good to have you, man. It's good to be here. It's awesome. It's always so, good to be on Far Side Jive. There you go. You even got it right. I did. Yeah. What do you got? A pick? All right. Ooh. Ooh. <laughs> You are a visual artist. Visual artist. Man. Wow, that was pretty slick. Skills. Man, you do have skills. Skills. Yeah. What else is going on? Man, nothing. <laughs> Just playing all the time. I know there's a lot going on, right? Playing music. All the yeah, time. Yeah, all the time. All the time, every day. Wow. All day, every day, writing songs. What do you do when you're not doing music? Sleep. Is that it? Really? Yeah. So music is your life all the time so how did you like wind up choosing music to be your career your lifelong career uh, it's the only good job i could get with so many felonies <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah i forgot about those oh you only had the one right i don't know how many it was just a firearms thing it was right? a collection of them i got a collection <laughs> of them <laughs> so tell me who uh you started singing first right when you were just a little guy I did. Well, right. I did. I started playing guitar when I was younger. Well, now, wait a minute. Your family, they're, they're a bunch of singers. They're real singers. You're not? I'm not. <laughs> okay. So your family, now what's the difference in a real singer and a non-real singer? Because I, I think you sing pretty good. I, well, I sing because I have to. Uh, you know, I can't ever find a reliable singer. <laughs> it's just know? easier doing it yourself. Exactly. Yeah. All the good ones are in church. Yeah. They're not going to come out to where I play. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you just don't have to deal with all those egos. I know what I know what you're talking about. <clears throat> oh, yeah. So your family, bunch of singers, and you said real singers. How so? 
Uh, they're four part harmony singers, you know. They're oh. Church of Christ gospel singers. Oh, they, holy rollers. They sing a cappella, they don't sing with instruments. Oh, okay. The serious yeah. singers. Serious. Yeah. But you picked it up from them? I did. Yeah. Thing or two. Yeah. Yeah. And then who put the guitar in your hand? I wanted to start playing guitar when I was twelve. On your own? Yes. Or did you see did you see a show or, or No, I just wanted to play guitar. Just sounded good? Wanted to play forever. Wow. So, who got you your first one? I got it for... When I was 11. Started playing when I was 11, and I got my first guitar when I was 12. Wow. For my birthday. What did they give you? I got a Kramer. Oh. I got it at my uncle's pawn shop. Really? And he was like, you can have any wall on this guitar. And I said, I want that one. <laughs> and he said, all right, not that one. Pick another one. I said, I want that one. And he said... <laughs> Any wall, any guitar on this wall from here down. Yeah. And I said, okay. Yeah, yeah. So you, you picked out the right one, huh? The Kramer, I mean. It, yeah. Yeah, I guess. Yeah. I don't remember. I wish I still had it. Oh, you don't? I don't. Yeah. I traded in for another one and traded that in for another one and then traded that one in for cocaine. Oh, okay. Okay. How'd that work for you? That was good while it lasted. <laughs> Well, so what? Uh, what are you gonna play? I can play you something. Play me something. You gotta get warmed up for that open mic tonight at High and Tight. Oh yeah, we'll talk about your. We'll talk about all your gigs coming up because I know you've got a shit ton of them. Guys, if you don't know, this is Tin Man Travis. He plays all over Dallas Fort Worth. Well, mainly Dallas. You ever play in Fort Worth? I was there last night. Where, where uh, were you? Chief Records. Oh, were you? In the okay, stock cool. yards. Yeah. Oh, okay. Oh, yeah. We, uh, my Tipsy Gypsy and I, uh, she does a segment on my studio show. We were down in the stockyards doing some uh, video stuff uh, a few weeks back. Had a blast. I hadn't been in the stockyards in forever. But you don't regularly play down there, do you? No. Yeah. You should. I should. Yeah. I've been trying to. Oh, have you? I don't think they like people from Dallas. Oh, you just hadn't found the right spot. <laughs> you just hadn't found the right spot yet, Tim. Don't let me forget about that uh, guitar stand in my truck. I won't. Okay. Before y'all leave. What's Amy yawning for? Is that Amy, why are you yawning? You, you want to be on camera? I'll switch it around. We'll give you some spotlight. Oh. Oh, he kept you out all night, right? You sh you have to go to his stuff, right? Yeah. It's a requirement. <laughs> Was that in the prenup? You, yeah. you have to attend all my gigs, or it's over. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> we gotta have somebody clapping for him. <laughs> no, man, we're so glad you're here. I love your music. God, I love it. First time I heard it, I was like, dude, I love listening to you, and I don't get to enough. Unless I get you on my show. That's only, that. that's only time. What do you want to hear? You just play play something bar side jivish. <laughs> we'll challenge you. Will I snort my breakfast off my bathroom mirror? And I sip Tennessee whiskey, I love Lone Star beer. And I don't see nothing wrong with all the things that I've done. I sold a boatload of dope, had a short shotgun, but the system will let me make it. Pass the laws, I'm the first to break them, and I can't get ahead. I'm running behind, they say I'm too hard headed. I won't change my mind, I won't change. I like me this way, I won't change. You see, they told me one day, they said the taxes and death, well, they will always remain. I said, forget about me. I ain't gonna change, I won't change. You see, my friends switched to Evos, I still ride a pan. Guess you could call me a nostalgic man, cause they ain't ever cooked nothing like Jack Daniel Black. Riding around in antique Cadillacs, you see society gonna let me make it. 
Start their trends, I'm the first to break them And I can't get ahead with all the running behind Say I'm too hard-headed I won't change my mind, I won't change I like me this way, I won't change You see, they told me one day They said the taxes and death Would always remain, well just forget about me I ain't gonna change, I won't change A good friend of mine named Christopher Arnes, and he actually wrote this here song. And he was a giant of a man. He stood at six foot nine, weighed about 400 pounds. Hell, it could have been 420 for all I know. And I met him on all expense vacation by yours truly, Uncle Sam. And although I do tip my hat to those that have proudly served this country for us, Uncle Sam sent me and CA to a completely different kind of resort, <laughs> if you know what I mean. He just so happened to be a great songwriter. Now granted, if he wasn't a great songwriter, I would have chosen not to look up at him and said, hey CA, you suck at writing songs. And I chalked that up to my ma teaching me the laws of self-preservation. But he was a great songwriter and he taught me something I like to share with you today. and something that I like to share most times I play. And that's that a good songwriter works in what we call the great. And I said, C.A., could you explain that for me? And he said, man, it's real easy. And this is what he said. You take the black and the white. You take the wrong and the right. You take the truth and the fiction. You start mixing till you come out with a shade of gray that everybody can comprehend. And then he told me, for some people, it takes 50 of them. <laughs> and I said, C.A., I don't know if I need 50 shades of gray, but I do love the Grateful Dead, so a touch of gray will do. Now being such a good songwriter, you never know when he was making something up or you never know when he's being true. But I knew without a doubt in that back staircase on the back side of the chow hall next to the rec center located in El Reno, Oklahoma at a federal prison called El Reno FCI that he was without a doubt telling nothing but the truth, the whole truth. So help me God when he told me this, what I'm about to sing for you. And he said, Well, I'll snort my breakfast off my bathroom mirror. I like Tennessee whiskey, Lone Star beer. I don't see nothing wrong with all them things I've done. Just a boatload of dope, a short shotgun. You see the system, it won't let me make it. They pass the laws, I'm the first to break them. And I can't get ahead without a running behind. Say I'm too hard headed. Won't change my mind, I won't change. I like me this way, I won't change You see, they told me one day They said the taxes and death Well, they would always remain I said, forget about me I ain't gonna change, I won't change I like me this way, I won't change Well, they told me one day They said taxes and death Well, they will always remain Just forget about me I ain't gonna change Lord knows I won't change Thank you, thank you, thank you. Love it, love it. So, tell us about, uh, if you don't mind, tell us about your experience uh, on the wrong side of the law. I was amazing. <laughs> what happened? Oh, uh, they caught me. <laughs> no, <laughs> no way. <laughs> yeah. Man, look at all this material you wouldn't have had if oh, you hadn't had that experience, right? Oh, I know. It's Did but but you did you did learn something, didn't you? Oh yeah, oh yeah. Not to get caught. Not to tell anybody what you're doing. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. It's the best and worst thing that happened to me, you know. Yeah. I mean, it was it was kind of a blast when I was away, you know, on vacation. People were like, I don't understand that. And I'm like, well, you know, I'm not no weirdo sex crimer. I'm not touching kids and I'm not telling on people, so it was actually kind of a blast for me in there. Yeah. You, know? uh, you got to make light out of a good, a bad situation. Well, how was life prior to that? Was it pretty rough? Uh, it was. It was completely a uh, path of destruction. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. you were on a spiral down. Oh yeah, I think I was already like 
through ground level. I wow. was like, I was hitting crude oil. So that was. I did. I hit crude oil down there at the bottom. So that's why Texas you say, tea. That's why you say it was black, a, black gold. That's why you say it was a bad thing, but also a good thing, right? Oh yeah. So how long were you in? I did most of my twenties. Wow. Yeah, about nine birthdays in there. Wow. Oh yeah. Some characters. A lot of characters in there. So what did you learn from that experience? Besides how to play the blues. I grew up, man. I learned how to be a man, you know. Keep my word, do what I'm going to say I'm going to do, whether or not I want to do it or not. Yeah. Some of those things. Yeah. Well, tell us about how you learned. Learn how to weld. Learned Did you really? Solder. Learned how to... Make bulletproof helmets for the military, not necessarily ours. And I learned that that was weird. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I guess so. Yeah, I mean, but oh well. Why well, they have a tag on them? Yeah, they go Iran, to uh, Israel, and all kinds of other places. You know? Oh yeah, they sent helmets yeah. to all kinds of places. Yeah, yeah. So tell us about how the blues you you. Learn the blues in prison. Oh man, that's just uh, uh, there's this guy named Herbert Porter, and I'd already played guitar, and um, they had a music program there, and they brought me over there because they found out I could play a little bit, and I went over there, and then I got done playing with the guys, and he was like, "Dude, your your rhythm's horrible." Oh, and yeah. I was like, "Thanks." He was like, "What kind of music are you trying to play?" I was like, "I want to play rock and roll," and I. I I feel like writing the blues since I'm in here. And he was like, we need to learn the pentatonic scale. So I had, uh, my mother sent me a book of all the scales. And then slowly I learned a little here and a little here. And I'm learning more every day. It's never going to end. And um, I actually saw that guy. And he's out now. He's off vacation. And he does long haul trucking. Hmm. And he stopped into Dallas, and I took him out to watch me play one night, and it blew his mind. Oh, wow. Yeah. He was like, wow. Because, you know, he doesn't even play anymore. But it blew his mind, you know. But I do it full time now. I don't even think he recognized me when I ran into him. Hmm. You look a lot different. I always look different. <laughs> Oh, you're about the same as you were the last time I saw you. Life of Sneaky Pete. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I bet he was proud. Oh, yeah. It blew his mind. He was like, yeah. dude, I can't believe you're actually doing this right now. I was like, yep. Yeah. So had he ever... Oh, Porter. Had he ever made it as far as you did, I mean, working for money? Um, You know, I'm sure he wasn't making... I mean, he did have, he played a lot of gigs when he was growing up, but he was making more money in other ways, obviously. Yeah. Yeah. Hmm. For sure. Why don't you place another one? I got you. What do you want to hear? Did you play for Amy at home? I did. Did you a little concert in the, in the yeah. kitchen? Concert in the kitchen. <laughs> I had a night off one time. That was rare. <laughs> one time. <laughs> I decided, uh, I decided I was going to go out and play at one of my friend's shows and just sit in. And, and Amy was like, she was like, please, please stay here. And we started watching a movie and I told her I'd stay there. She fell asleep. So I went in the other room. wrote this song right here. It's called Staying Here for the Night.
makes you happy I'll be staying here for the night If it makes you happy I'll never leave your side I'll be here for you to understand I don't want you saying Cause I'm gone I want you happy, babe Oh, I'm staying here for the night And don't be lonely Won't you sit down by my side Come here and hold me Won't you feel me squeeze you tight You need to feel to understand I don't want you sad Cause I'm gone I want you happy, babe So I'm staying here for the night Don't be scared Oh, there ain't no need for fright and You can have no fear, babe And we can leave on all the lights You need to see to understand I don't want you sad Cause I'm gone I want you happy, babe So I'm staying here for the night What you need to understand I don't want you sad Cause I'm gone I want you happy, babe Staying here for the night. Wow. Guys, if you don't know, this is Tin Man Travis right here, singer songwriter. Howdy. Howdy. Where were you born? Tyler. Oh, that's right. East Texas, which you grew uh, up in Plano, right? I did. East Plano. I grew up in East Plano. Yeah. Wow. Still have family in uh, Plano? I do not. Where's your family now? Mesquite. Mesquite. Well, they didn't yeah. move that far. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Pretty close. Man, you have been around. You have done so many things. Um, you've come so far. You've had a lot of experiences that a lot of people, hopefully, may not have to experience. But what advice can you give to musicians just starting out? Quit. Oh, come on. No. Quit while you're ahead. No, man. You love what you do. <laughs> I tell them to uh, get good gear and take care of it, no matter what. Learn on anything, but when it's time to start playing, get you something that's reliable. I tell them all the things that I yell at my band about. Show up. 
an hour or more prior to when you're supposed to be there. Right. If you're there an hour, you're there on time. An hour early is on time. Right. Show up with a quarter inch cable. Show up with your guitar strap. Bring a tuner. Bring your guitar. You know? <laughs> These are all things I have to tell my guys on a regular basis. What? Go ahead, speak up. Yeah, don't leave your gear in the car. Especially if you parked a long way away. <laughs> yeah, just any time outside anywhere. I mean, unless you're gated oh. in your yard or have a oh, garage. Okay. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Unless you want it to disappear. Yeah, that happens, doesn't it? Oh, yeah. Does it happen to you? No. It okay. has with gear that I've loaned to other people. Oh, yeah. I've seen those Facebook posts. Whole trailer full. Yeah, it's rough. Yeah. Stick at it. Get out and play. Go to an open mic. Figure out if people like what they're hearing. Speaking of open mics. Don't be too convoluted to think that they like it. Let's stop right there and you talk about your open mic. Wednesday nights. High and tight. Open mic. That's that barber shop, right? I'm scared to go in there. I'm afraid they won't want to cut my hair. Because <laughs> they don't cut yours. They don't. They, don't. they trim it? No. Nah. No? No, I don't let anybody touch my hair. You just go in there to play. Just go in there to play. Yeah. No, wait, so I had to, I wanted to know about your open mic so you can continue on with your Wednesday advice. nights, 9.30 till whenever it's over. Drink sponsors every week. Drink specials. All talent welcome. Comedians, two minute, no suck rule. <laughs> Up to a hundred dollar cash prize. Who, who's the judge on the comedy? Is that you? The way it works is, for every drink you purchase... Oh, who's the judge on the comedy? Yeah, it's yeah. mine. I'm the... You're the judge? Yeah. So you decide if it sucks I'm or not. I'm the ultimatum, <laughs> you know? If you got me laughing pretty hard within two minutes, just go ahead and roll it out until you're out of material. <laughs> it happens all the time, you know? I have to tell them you suck. <laughs> Sorry, but you got to buy the beer. You can come out there all you want and not even know how to play guitar and get up there and bang around on it. I'm going to give you three songs. You know? Yeah. Get up there with that comedy. Two minutes. You can say a lot in two minutes as yeah. a comedian. Yeah. Oh, you yeah. know what I mean? Yeah. That's right. Sure can. It may yeah. feel like it's forever, but it's really not. It, it's like these shows, you know. We, we start them and the next thing you know, it's been an hour and we're like, really? It's time to end? Just that quick. It's over. Anytime you get in front of the camera, it goes by so fast. So we give a cash prize. We, uh, the way that works is the audience, for every drink they purchase, they receive a little ticket that they can write a name on. And they place it in their tip jar, in the tip jar at the stage. Mm -hmm. And they put that in there with hundreds of dollars as well. <laughs> right. Um, in the tip jar, because it's, it's necessary, because I have... Um, Eight illegitimate children. <laughs> I have three hardcore drug addictions and other addictions, you know. And I mean, I, every night I'd like to feed them both. I like to feed the kids right. and the addictions. And you take care of the kids first, though. Well, no, 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 no. no. The kids eat second. It's daddy's addictions. So I need hundreds of dollars in there. And you place that ticket in there, and we count them up at the end of the night, and we give up to a hundred dollars away. Oh, okay, cool. So really, it's not necessarily based, it's not like a talent competition, it's more like a drinking game. You bring your friends out, <laughs> and they can write on the ticket your name, right. and you could be the worst person there that night, oh. but you're there with eight real drinkers, and right. you're going to... Yeah, you're going to perform. Or if you were a real drinker yourself, you know, you could actually show up and, <laughs> right, right. and drink enough to win, and maybe take $10 <laughs> home. That sounds like a hell of a good time. It's a great time. God, I can't believe I haven't been. Must be present to claim prize or have a representative still in the on the premises. Right. It's very cool. Yeah. Great bar. Yeah. High and Top Barbershop. Live music seven nights a week. I play there once a month with my band. I'm there every Wednesday, though. So come out. Buy me a drink, please. Put some money in the tip jar. Lots of it. Or write somebody's name on the ticket. Yeah. Okay, so now we did that little commercial. Now we can go back to advice. Um, you should uh, always just do you. Mm. 
That's good. You know what I mean? Be genuine like you. Yeah. Find a good interpretation of yourself, you know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. And always be counting. Learn to count. Make it easy for a band for you. And what else would I tell someone that wanted to be a musician besides you're crazy? <laughs> Amy doesn't think you're crazy. Uh, <laughs> she seems pretty happy. She's still with you, too. I know. It's, it's like, what, five years? I mean, you know. Almost six. Wow. Having an anniversary. When I saw coming. the Virgin Mary in a, in a uh, busted water pipe, you know. I thought that that was a miracle, but she's still with me. That's okay. I'm pretty close. I got that's two miracles. How many do you have to see to be the Pope? I have no clue, man. For witness three miracles or perform. Or... Don't get me to line. Yeah, weird. Hey, what do you feel, Tin Man Travis, is the best song you've ever written? Best one. Oh man. So many good ones that I, know. I like, you know. I know. But what will you feel like is the best? My best work. I know. I don't know. Hand me that water right there, please. Oh, sorry. I had to get it out of the frame when I took a picture. <laughs> don't let me forget I've got your guitar stand in my truck. Okay. <laughs> I don't, I'm, tired of, I'm tired of hauling around. I don't know, man. It's, it's, it's subjective, you know. It's... Uh, what do, what do people think's my best song? No, what do you think is my best song? I, uh, what do you think is your best? It's probably um, pencil in two. Pencil in two. When'd you write it? About two, three years ago, I guess. Two years ago. Where were you when you wrote it? In the living room. In your house. So what'd you write it about? Um, I'd been in a scuffle with a missus. And, um, I don't know, wait, that's not, uh, oh, I didn't write it in a scuffle. I'm <laughs> thinking of another song. <laughs> He's got so many bests. It's about, um, oh, it's a love song, of course. So it's about, um, you know, the lengths I would go to the, to show my love and the things I would do that I normally wouldn't do. And, um, and where I learned that love. Fight a thousand battles if it mattered, if it showed you how much I care. And one by one, I can knock them all down a thousand times, do my best to try to fight fair. Fight dirty too if it's what I had to do just to be with you. Well, that's what I do. I'd fight dirty for you. Cross a thousand rivers If the shivers Would end on the next bank With your embrace And 
I could swim a thousand oceans under the notion that the next coast was gonna own your face. Cross a thousand bridges too If it's what I had to do Just to be with you I'd build them for you And hell I'd burn them too And there's a thin line in between What's been considered right from wrong And who am I to judge where that line is strong, where that line should belong. I'd snap that pencil in two, erase that line for you if I had to. Oh, that's what I'd do. Erase a line for you, yeah. Snap the pencil in two See, I was raised around a lot of great men Great men that come through the Great Depression World War II, Korean War, Vietnam Persian Gulf, Desert Storm in Afghanistan I was raised around master welders and mechanics Men of the cloth, outlaws, and musicians. It's raised around great men like my grandfather that knew the importance of time. That's why I made watches from scratch. He told me there was nothing more important than every second minute, hour you spent with those you love, your friends, your family. I was raised around other great men like my other great grandfathers. My father's father, my other grandfather, he built water treatment centers from the bottom of the boot across the great state of Texas all the way up into New Mexico, you see. He understood the importance of water. I was raised around great men that didn't always get along with the other great men in my family. And if you're a great man, you know that you have the choice to choose to disagree. See, a great man doesn't have to have the same political views or religious beliefs, still the same. In my family, those men would almost come to blows. As much as I want this song to be about them, I suppose that it's not. There was something stronger, a, a bigger force, something keeping us together. The laces that tied us together, the glue that bonded us, were the women. So this song goes out to all the greater women of the world out there doing things for us, keeping us together. I wrote this song for my gal. And if you feel like I'm making you sick right now, if you say, this singer is making me sick, I will never find love like this. Well, you're wrong, because I love you. But one day it's going to come running out of left field. It'll probably put you in your place. Knock the taste right out of your mouth when you find a love. A love like this. I take a thousand lives if I feel their intentions were to cause you harm. I could break a thousand limbs, a thousand legs, snap a thousand necks, crack a thousand arms. I can turn my other cheek too That's what I had to do To be with you I turn my cheek for you I do that for you, yeah There's a thin line in between What's been considered right from wrong And who am I to judge where that line is drawn, where that line should belong. I'd 
snap that pencil in two and I'd erase that line for you if I had to that's what I'd do erase the line for you snap the pencil in two Another great one from the collection of Tin Man Travis. Collection. What a, what a great song, man. What a great song. How many have you written? I don't know. 100? Pounds. <laughs> Pounds of paper. Wow. That's huge. Yeah, I love that one. That's what I usually close with. Oh, well, we're not closing yet, are we? Oh yeah, 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 yeah. So, uh, why don't you play on one more? You mind? Gotcha. Tuning, check the tuning. Everybody born in Texas? Yeah, we were. Huh? We were. Whereabouts? Uh, Dallas. Dallas. Yeah. Amy, were you born in Texas? Kaufman, Texas. That's where my dad's from. I was born in East Texas myself. I was there five whole days. And they kicked me out. <laughs> no. On the morning, I was born in Tyler. Some say all the roses turn to black. And my doctor, he said that a young man's a fighter. Upside down, reached around and I slapped him back. And I ain't saying, I ain't saying I'm that tough. And I ain't saying, I ain't saying I don't believe. Oh, I'm just saying that the stock can sprout or up, even if you sow your very best seed. At the age of 10, I started smoking cigarettes. Strong drink, cold beer, it hit my scene. But then the smoke, it started rising out this left hand. And I started dancing with the old devil cane. And I ain't saying, I ain't saying I'm that tough. Oh, I ain't saying. I ain't saying I don't believe Oh, I'm just saying that the stock, well, it can sprout up Even if you sow your very big seed said, son, we're gonna throw away our key. Even when they public stored me away, oh, I still stood in all the things that I believe. And I believe, I believe that I'm not that tough. And I believe, I believe at times I believe. But I believe 
that the stalk can sprout rub. But even if you sow your very best seed, even if you sow your very best seed, even if you sow your very best seed. Great songs. Oh, thank you. They're so, coming together. Oh, yeah. I think so. So really, how many have you written, do you think? Any clue? No clue. No clue. Three or four hours worth. Three or four or five hours worth. Of stuff worth playing. Hmm. What would you say? Way more than that. <laughs> How many of them have you recorded? Very few. I don't do much recording. I just like uh, to play it for people. Right, live. There'll what be is... some stuff coming out this year, though. Oh, well, I was going to ask you what's, uh, what's going to be going on in 2020. You got something new? Tin and Tonic album coming out pretty soon here. Oh, good. Now, Tin and Tonic's your regular band, right? Yeah, it's my psychedelic rock and roll band. Okay, who all's in that? Eric Ellis on drums, James Kirk Hampton on keys. Oh, yeah. Jamie Valhalla on bass. A couple of auxiliary players every now and then. Yeah, yeah. And you've got another project besides that, right? Haynesville Traveling Radio Show. Yeah. And that's uh, What's going on there? It's like more rock and honky-tonk, and we've got a few shows coming up this month with them. It's uh, David Mitchell. He's a seasoned veteran. His father was a bass player for the Mystics. David Mitchell played with Speed Trucker and Black Irish and Popper and all kinds of bands. He's a killer drummer. Rocky Garza on bass. Rocky Garza plays over with all kinds of people. Pedigo, Magic Pilsner. Plays with all kinds of other acts all the time. You never know. He's a seasoned vet. The show coming up this month, it'll be me singing and playing guitar and, and Brad Russell on, on vocals and guitar as well. Then I play with the Tuxedos, Justin Cash and the Tuxedos. Play with Casey Ray and the Ramblers. Wow. Play with Travis Hampton Clark. God. And I got the 10 man trio. Who's in the trio? It varies. Sometimes okay. it's a keys player. Sometimes it's Kirk Hampton, Eric Ellis and me. Sometimes it's Jamie Valhalla and me. The last time we played the trio was Richie Owens, who plays with Justin Tipton and the Ramblers. Uh, Justin Tipton and the Troublemakers, excuse me. Justin Tipton and the Troublemakers. We had Richie Owens on bass and Mark LeBlanc on drums. No, wait, not Mark LeBlanc. Uncle Guido. Uncle Guido is what we call him. <laughs> Mark LeBlanc's been playing forever. He was, he's still Vince Vance's drummer, so. Yeah, yeah, very cool, very cool. I think that's it. Yeah, you got a lot going on, man. That was like five or six projects. It is, it's a busy schedule. Yeah, so what do you got, what shows you got coming up here in the near future? Saturday, Saturday I'm gonna be playing the trio. At Pecan Lodge, six thirty to nine thirty. Pecan Lodge, you got great food, right? Yeah, it's delicious. Yeah. Wow. I'm glad you asked me that because I need to <laughs> confirm. Confirm that. <laughs> Y'all find out who's who's gonna be in the band then. Uh, yep. Oh, by the way. Perfect. Yeah. Con Lodge on Saturday. And then Saturday morning, I might be playing the brunch at Cretia's. Hmm. If I'm not there, there's always great live music there. I book for Cretia's and Bishop Arts Oak Cliff. Oh, do you? Yeah, so I might be there for brunch. I might not. What kind of restaurant is that? It's a bakery and like just home cooking. It's great. Okay. So good. Yeah. Grandma's chicken. That's what you gotta get when you go there. Grandma's Egg chicken. Sardou. Sounds good. Sounds good. Hey, um, how do people, uh, where do they contact you at? 
email, Facebook. Tin and Tonic Music. Okay. And that's my email. You can contact me on Messenger on Facebook. Tin Man, tra- Tin Travis, T I N Travis, or you can contact me on Tin and Tonic page on Facebook. Tin and Tonic Music again. Where else can they contact me? And the dude plays like five or six or seven days a week. So Tin Man he, Travis. He's always somewhere on Instagram. Even in Fort Worth, sometimes. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I was telling those guys, I was over there at Chief Records, that place was awesome. Oh, yeah. Last time I was over there, though, I won an open mic there. I mean, not open mic. I won a battle of the bands there. In the oh, did you? Yards at the White oh, Elephant. Cool. Oh, cool. Oh, the White Elephant, man. Yeah. And I haven't had many gigs over there Yeah. after that, since the Black Horse Saloon shut down. Well, that was a place. Black Horse Saloon, I don't know. Took a knife and everything in there. I didn't know what to do. About that place, yeah, yeah, old black horse land. But you play most of your gigs in uh, Deep Ellum, right? Deep Ellum in East Texas, yeah, yeah. Far west is Lubbock, <clears throat> far east is Longview. Wow, hey, if I get <clears throat> if I get you out of here a couple minutes early, will you mind playing one more on the what place out? I got you. Okay, guys, you've been listening to Tin Man Travis, my friend. Oh, by the way, where'd the man cut Tin Man? I get it, but. Who who started that? Oh man, it's just been a reoccurring nickname my whole life. Because people think that ten, you know Tin uh, Man, it, you know it's it's a it's a nickname, right? But your name is actually Tin. Tin Travis. So, but where did the who who put the man in there? It's just a natural. Someone, uh, a buddy or friends, somebody with a name like Tin Man is sure to come. Out okay. Sooner or okay. Later. So you don't remember when can. Tin roof. People call me Ren Tin Tin all the time. Tell them don't do that. It's a canine cop. (laughs) Okay, guys. Well, you can see Tin Man Travis all over town whenever you want. Just check him out on social media. And, uh, hey, go listen to a show. And make sure you uh, take care of that tip jar. (laughs) Right? Feed the kids. Got to pay. They got to make that house payment. Yeah. Yeah. Guys, I want to remind you about a few vendors we've got here. Fireground Coffee Company. Those guys are a couple of Dallas firefighters, and they do give part of their proceeds back to first responders. So check out their coffee line here. We've also got eco-friendly candles from Hip and Hippie, Torch Candle Club, and Rosewater Yoga. Those candles will steal your heart away. They are green as green can be, made of soy wax, unbleached wicks, and recyclable glass jars that you can use for drinking. Don't forget Beating Dreams. She makes handmade jewelry. Cher Coffin makes handcrafted books and is the author of several, I think she said nine, meditative drawing books and books on aromatherapy. Sally makes hand-painted silk scarves. Fanchon teas make handcrafted, high-quality, one-of-a-kind herbal blend teas. Chris is a photographer and creates inspired, uh, photography inspired paper art and one of a kind handcrafted cards. Kim Hepner makes uh, fine art, uh, beautiful floral paintings. And rock star pet collars, Lori and John make the coolest uh, pet collars for your little rock star. So ch- come check those out. Brad Jensen, of course, Brad's been on the show a number of times. He, Makes all sorts of cool things, hats and teas and all that stuff. Empire Bakery, out on Lovers, they bring their bread by most of the time. And if you're looking for one of those one-of-a-kind gifts for, say, Valentine's Day, guys, coming up here in February 14th, come check us out. Pick up something that she will not find anywhere else. We are open here every Wednesday from 4 till 8 and on Saturdays from... 11 to 4 p.m. Don't forget you can follow me and all my content. Just go to YouTube. It's the easiest thing. Just YouTube.com, Barside Jive Live, and you can check out all the stuff. I archive it all there. And don't forget my shows at the Vocal Studios in North Dallas. They're 60-minute shows featuring musicians. I feature singer-songwriters on Thursday and tribute cover bands on Tuesdays. That's an hour studio show. And you need to check us out. Vocalnow.com. Remember, vocal is misspelled. Vocal with a K. 
vocalnow.com. Okay, I think we're about done here. Ten. Oh, if you create music or some other form of art and would like to be featured on one of my shows or you'd like to advertise or sponsor a show or maybe you just have a comment, you can email me at dc at barsidejive.com. Don't forget our show is sponsored by Edo Popkin. Based in Zurich, Switzerland, Edo creates fine men's clothing for the cosmopolitan man. Tailored designs for a unique look setting you apart from the crowd. Our show is also sponsored by Optographics here in Dallas who created my amazing signage. That's right. These guys set the standard for multidimensional and special effects imaging and printing. So take your print needs to a whole new level with OptiGraphics. So guys, we are just about out of here. Thanks for hanging out with us this evening. Be kind to one another. Be a hero in someone's life. And until next time, keep it real. Keep on rocking. One more time from Tin Man Travis. Thanks, Tim. Yeah, I appreciate anytime. you. Glad to be here, man. Glad to be here. I sing these songs straight from my heart. I strum my heart with this old beat up guitar And you might catch me playing on the stage down at y'all's local college dive bar With my scuffed up boots, black cap, pearl snap, chain wallet man Finally quit smoking reds But if you're lucky you can catch me in the parking lot With the band while we're smoking our meds That's right, I've been around the block I plead my hand and I've shot the dice I hate staring at the hands on the clock cause they sent me to prison more than twice. They said I'm a criminal, a crook, a hellbound hillbilly hedonistic hippie pothead. Special thanks to Stevie Ray, Willie and Elvis, Steve Earl, the Grateful Dead cause they made me a, a honky tonk all star. I wrote the book on drinking and I thought that I could handle just one more shot. Man, hell, it's what I get for thinking. Then those police pulled me over. Whoop, whoop. Sent me right back to the pen And the whole time that I was there I was cooking the hooch For all my friends I Don't tell anybody a toast and I've got just one last thing to say if you choose your battles wisely you'll live to fight another day so you might want to take it easy if you got to drive tonight cause I found out that those flashing red and blues well they ain't neon lights not for an old a honky tonk all star loves to do some drinking and he loved the sound of those steel guitars like to hear your own glasses clanking well you ain't no weekend warrior i see you on bar side jiving again well you professional honky tonk all stars and i'm proud to call you my friends for being some a honky tonkin all stars yes you are